this project, which is a knowledge mobilization project, an interview series, as well as a curriculum building project, is called Illuminating Limits, Social, Community, and Educational Responses to the Poly Crisis. Together, as the new curriculum group, we're asking, could we imagine and enact a curriculum that truly addresses the limits of growth and the problem of ecological overshoot? What would these curricular and educational pathways look like? We're really responding to the, the big question. Why has education, across all levels and sectors, ultimately failed to address the myriad of problems associated with climate change? Uh, we believe that the root of this failure ultimately lies in the stories we tell about climate change. These stories are simultaneously too complex, overly focused on communicating as well as accumulating scientific facts, but also too simplistic, reducing the problem to singular issues like carbon emissions and thus advocating out-of-this-world techno-fixes that really just perpetuate unsustainable policy and life pathways. In this video, I'm going to bring attention to two heuristics that we've developed to help guide educational discussion in this time. At the root of the issue is that these big terms like climate change, like global warming, like the Anthropocene, they ultimately point to outcomes of the problem while obscuring and obfuscating us from the problem itself. And really, who said we're talking about a single problem? The term polycrisis has been increasingly employed to describe the many interconnected and environmental and, and social crises we are confronting in the 21st century. We maintain that what many refer to through these catch-all labels like climate change, global warming, and, and even the Anthropocene might actually be more accurately described as a era of polycrises or a tangle of polycrises, um, which Heinberg and Miller describe in their influential report, Welcome to the Great Unraveling, as a cluster of interdependent global risk that create a compounding effect such that their overall impact exceeds the sum of their individual parts. The notion of polycrisis allows us to locate and bring attention to the many-headed hydra of human-induced climate change, unhinged economic industrial growth, and their broader impacts on societal well-being. So that, as Heinberg and Miller continue in their report, the consequences of economic acceleration, including, ironically, its inevitable slowing, are leading to social unraveling. Importantly, the poly crisis encompasses much more than climate change and global warming, connecting issues as diverse as biodiversity and habitat loss, water and food scarcity, pollution and resource depletion, to growing economic and social precarity. As figure one showcases, an inability to properly acknowledge the multi-sided nature of the poly crisis results in what energy scientist Arthony Berman has coined as carbon tunnel vision. The idea that these various challenges can be remedied by simply tackling the problem of carbon emissions. If there is a core underlying factor that could explain the poly crisis writ large, we, it might be attributed to the foundational issue of ecological overshoot fueled by accelerating economic and industrial growth and consumption, as population ecologists like William Rees have been providing evidence of for decades through applying methods like ecological footprint analysis. What is so significant about EFA is how it unambiguously shows the link between increasing consumption and population growth with appropriated land use. This connection to land use in itself reveals that the crisis of ecological overshoot must be further connected to the ongoing 500-year history of colonial imperialist land grabs, which ultimately comes down to the private accumulation and capture of socially and naturally created value. This project seeks to articulate jointly existential and educational responses and interventions to grapple with and navigate the poly crisis, offering a simple heuristic or roadmap to reanimate and reorient education and curriculum theorizing in this time. In short, we are currently in what is likely the end stages of a period of accelerated industrialism and planetary overshoot that mainly started in the second half of the 20th century, labeled by Anthropocene scholars as the Great Acceleration. However, this Great Acceleration is showing signs of withdrawing as we reach certain planetary thresholds and boundaries, which will result in forms of social environmental raveling, recently called the Great Unraveling. Such unraveling will eventually result in a post-growth future, a world order in which economic and industrial growth has ceased, 
and likely because of an involuntary and unplanned cessation of growth brought on by necessity. We can conceptualize the early stages of such a post-growth future as a kind of interregnum, which sociologist Wolfgang Streeck describes as a prolonged period of social entropy, radical uncertainty, and indeterminacy in which society is essentially ungovernable and no new world order waits in the wings. With this KM project, we seek to articulate how the aims and purposes we commonly subscribe to education are being dramatically reconfigured in this time of runaway growth and associated social and environmental unraveling. We make the case that education, public education, informal education, community education, as well as formal institutional forms of education from K to 12 to higher education, must rise to meet the challenges of the poly crisis by fully confronting the interconnectedness of these challenges. Ultimately, this will require telling new stories that move us beyond the reduction of carbon tunnel vision, just as much as it requires deeply considering new existential openings for what meaningful pedagogy and curriculum can be in this difficult historical time. Building off of Bruno Latour's late work, Down to Earth, Politics in the New Climatic Regime, we present a terrestrial vision for critical ecopedagogy. This ecopedagogy has the difficult task of reconciling students, ourselves, to the world by confronting us with the reality and conditions of our freedom to act or not act within our own local embedded con context. This is a confrontation with limits, both social and natural, most fundamentally the limits of a planet with limited resources and carrying capacity. But how do we move along ways of life that have not yet been trodden? In a 2023 article, what do we talk about when we talk about climate change? I located and described a kind of pedagogical curricular unfurling that conversations around climate change, or my, at least my conversations with my students about climate change, often move through in terms of three pedagogical as also existential questions. What's happening? Why me? And finally, what now? These questions are conceptualized as a kind of recursive unfurling through which teachers and students iteratively, both collectively, individually as well, grow their awareness of climate change, what we're calling climate change, and ultimately the poly crisis. One way of expressing this dialogical pedagogical movement is in the form of a spiral in which each question resurfaces again and again as students and teachers encounter and foster greater and more nuanced understandings of these interconnected issues. Each dialogic stage brings new layers of pedagogical attention towards our existential becoming and awareness. Each what now opens up into a new what's happening. We might think of such a hermeneutic, deeply existential and phenomenological process as analogous with uh, Bill Piner's method of Carrere, which reframes the curriculum question, which knowledge or what knowledge is of most worth, as a complicated and ongoing dialogue between the self and the self's relationship to the world, through which we can, as Bill says, reconnect the minimalized psychological self to the public political sphere.